What's your strategy, big dog? So what? What's your strategy? Strategy? We're about to watch Brooks Merkel, a bubble semifinal athlete, demo a workout from Friday of week three in our season prep cycle in TTT Compete. This one is going to be heavier load, a short time domain, and we're also adding an echo bike. So this is going to look more like a quarterfinal style workout. But keep in mind, in this season prep cycle, we're both prepared... <laughs> We're both preparing for the open and quarterfinals. We know most of our athletes now are going to make the top 25% and get into quarterfinals. So we want to make sure that you're ready and prepared for whatever quarterfinals throws at us. Historically, it's been heavier loads, some shorter time domain workouts that require a lot of high power effort. So this workout, zero to seven minute clock, you're going to complete a 40 or 30 calorie echo bike buy-in. Once you do that, there's going to be an AMRAP in remaining time of eight deadlifts at 315 and 205 pounds. That's male, female, respectively, and eight bar muscle-ups. Then at the eight minute mark, you will have eight minutes to build to a tough squat clean. And that one is going to be a spicy one. Strategy, hard on the bike. Um, unbroken on the first Metcon, and then uh, clean heavy, put weight on the bar. Do you have a target weight you're hoping to hit? Uh, let's see, I mean, I hit 310 last Saturday when I was just like going for a heavy clean, so I don't know, maybe 295, 300. Cool. That'd be nice. We'll see. All right, he climbs up on the bike. Here we go. Here we go. Climbs. So, climbs if, hey, if you're going to start a workout with, you know, Echo like this, 40 cows for the guys. What kind of warm up are you doing for that? Does that change how you warm up? Yeah, I would, be, gonna... I, I would have our athlete, our athletes will do this because we have warm ups and compete. Um, they'll spend a lot of time on the bike. So, like a general warm up, they'll even start with five to 10 minutes, just easy spinning, just getting used to being on the Echo bike. Usually, we're using other variations, like the rower, for example, is more tested in the sport, but we're going to spend a lot of time there. And then, even in the specific warm up intervals, they'll spend a lot of time uh, on the bike because that part, like Brooks, and we'll talk about this in a minute, he is very, very fit. He's like, he's got a huge aerobic base. And so he's comfortable on the bike. For most people, 40 cals or doing 30 cals for the women will blow them up to where it impacts the rest of the workout, which is, you know, obviously that's, you, you can't have that in a workout where it is an AMRAP at the end. And so that's like a big no-no uh, messing up that kind of warm-up. Yeah, if you don't warm up on the bike, as everyone knows, you just go and jump on and you try to do 40 cows for time, it's going to blow you up. And then, again, like you, you could, the deadlift's going to feel way heavier than it should. The bar muscle-ups aren't going to – you're not going to be able to do big sets. Or some people might read that workout and say, well, I'll, I'll, you know, they'll do a, war a warm-up, but they'll be like, I'll get warm for the next part. But that's not how you <laughs> yeah. should view it, right? No, no, no. You should be doing intervals where maybe you do 10 cows or even 15 cows at game pace into maybe half a set of deadlifts and bar muscle-ups, like four and four for a couple of rounds. All right. Were you able to see the screen? There? Yeah, I think he's at 469 watts, which is an elite level pace for 40 calories. There are going to be guys, let's say, if this was an open workout or a quarterfinal workout, that may try to sprint the first 20 or 25 cows and then back off. Uh, I very rarely think that that works, uh, unless you're just like a monster athlete that's super big and can just pedal on the bike at a fast pace. For most guys, you're going to see anywhere from like 375 to 450 watts for the 40 cows. He did that in a minute 45, which obviously means that he was averaging over 20 cows a minute. That's an elite level pace. And then females will be uh, probably anywhere from like uh, 240 watts to maybe 320 watts. I know that's a broad range, but it's just reality of the different levels of athletes. So it goes immediately into an AMRAP he has until the seven-minute mark. So he gets off at 140. That means he's going to have five minutes and 20 seconds to go back and forth between the deadlifts and the bar muscle-ups. Now, we already talked about this with Brooks. He has an elite level, when I say elite, like games-level engine, but his strength metrics are a little bit lower than where they need to be to make a semifinal or to make the games. That's his goal, right? So for him, a test like this is going to come down to how do the, the deadlifts feel and can he manage big sets on the deadlifts? Or even if he does small sets, can he manage short rest breaks so that he can take advantage of his engine going back and forth? And then obviously he has really good ball muscle ups. All right, first round unbroken. He said he wanted to do that, and then he said he may pace after. So we'll see what he does on the deadlifts. 
I'll tell you this, someone that is strong, like let's say Travis or someone that just has really good deadlifts, they're going to transition to the barbell quickly and they're going to probably try to knock out big sets to start the first couple of rounds, bank some time. That's what I would do in this workout. I really like hinging off the ground. So I would try to do a couple sets unbroken, pace my bar muscle-ups, maybe walk over to the, the pull-up bar and go a little bit slower than normal. Those four there. Yeah, I think he's going to end up doing four and four for most of these sets. And you see, right, like the difference of the pull off the ground here is it's, it's heavy, and it's going to be heavy for most people. You know, I said Brooks isn't strong enough, but he is he's very strong compared to the average person. It's just when you're comparing it to the guys that are doing 600-pound deadlifts, 315 for him is going to be a little bit heavier than 50% of someone's max that's at the games level. And the impressive thing is he's doing, the you know, the, those deadlifts are pretty uh, snappy, and then he's snapping up here onto the muscle-ups, and he's got those AirPods in his ear the whole time. Does he have AirPods in his ear? Did he even notice that? What do you think he's listening to? Well, we find out here at the end. Oh, does he talk about it? Okay. Bar muscle ups still look really good. This is a this is a play off of the rogue workout from this past year. It's it's basically the same thing, and we wanted something that was really heavy and grindy that you know the the elite level athletes can still move through, but it kind of bottlenecks everyone else. We've had some really fast turnover workouts the first couple of weeks. This one's a little bit slower in turnover. Again, intentionally in case something like this comes out. But I think that when you have a workout like this, that means that pacing matters just as much as those that maybe you're doing a 15 or 20 minute AMRAP. People kind of just go off feel on this. And you need to have a plan for what happens when the deadlifts get really heavy or what happens when I can't do many bar muscle ups. Just make sure that you know that by round three where he's at here, it's going to get really tough. And honestly, these deadlifts look better than the last round. So you can see he's kind of settled in maybe after doing the, the bike. Four again. He is doing the... Uh Switch grip thing. Yeah, I'm a big fan of athletes training the clean grip. You just hold a hook grip in your clean position. I think that that's uh, probably a, a healthier way to train. I know that there are some coaches that disagree with me, but uh, you don't see, like, biceps injuries or other, like, upper back injuries. By that, you mean double overhand? Double overhand, Which is yeah. not what he was doing. Exactly. So double overhand would be in your clean grip with a hook grip, double overhand, as opposed to the mixed grip. Mixed grip, obviously, is just going to create some asymmetry, which, again, it makes it easier on your grip. But if you can train double overhand, you're going to have better grip endurance, and it keeps you safer for 10 years or 15 years of CrossFit. So is the point you're trying to make, say, during training, do the clean one, and then maybe during competing, you'll, you, if you want to go to the switch grip, you can? Yeah, you definitely could do that. I think that once you train the grip to have good grip endurance and strength to be able to hold a hook grip with deadlifts, you'll be able to do it faster in the double overhand two in workouts, and it doesn't impact your yeah, grip. I want to say, was it Horbath or someone in that rogue deadlift was double overhand, I think, the whole time? Yeah, it's, I mean, that's also yeah. the way I do it even for a max. Uh, yeah. I, I just think it's safer. You know, again, you, you don't hear of people... Definitely get more street cred. <laughs> yeah. You don't hear of people hurting their biceps or having upper back injuries with double overhand. I mean, not in the CrossFit space, like a power lifter maybe. Sure. I think that was what, was that his fourth round? Another really good transition to the bar. I, I know that this is a tough weight, and it's going to be a tough weight for anybody, but he's doing a really good job of, as soon as he gets back over to the bar, he's taking that deep breath and then grabbing it with heavy deadlifts or heavy squat cleans. That's just something you have to do as an athlete, is train yourself to step over the bar, and even if you don't want to, just commit to it. I tell athletes that all the time. You know, do kind of that half step back, half step in. But as soon as you step back in, that's your cue. You have to go, even though you don't want to. So first round was eight and eight. And then after that, he's done fours on the deadlifts. And his bar muscle ups still look pretty good. This gets dense when you get into that fourth or fifth round. You're doing a ton of bar muscle ups. So just like we talked about warming up the bike, you want to make sure that you warm up your bar muscle ups as well. See if it's getting a little bit harder. Still a good turnover. He just looked at the clock. He knows where he's at. If he can get all eight of these, that's a big win as you finish up this seven minutes, uh, the first part of this workout, which I think he's going to be able to. Wow, really come good on, job. Come on. I don't think he got there. Yeah, was it seven? I think seven he got total. To seven. But still, that's a that's awesome. Every so that was one rep shy of uh, five rounds, I think. Five. Four, yeah, four or five rounds. One yeah. of the two. Uh, either way, getting to that bar muscle ups and then being every single rep you get is going to be huge in this workout. Yep, and we actually, you know, this is on a Saturday, and right across the way we have Brooks's mom trains on site with us too. Let's go. And we're about to, uh, I think I sneak over here and see if we can get her input. There she is in the background. Oh, I see her. Hi, Paige. Kyle's helping him with his weights. Oh, I thought you said you were going to go and get some input from her. I do at some point. <laughs> I'm confused. I thought it was now. All right, it's okay. 
you, you're a busy man, Chris. You don't, can't remember everything, right? False, false start. So what what Brooks is about to do is he's going to build. Wait, 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 wait. wait. How did you want the first car, Mom? He killed it, of course. <laughs> All right, what was Brooks about to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What Brooks is about to do is build to a heavy squat clean. In compete, when you guys see this workout, what we're going to do is give you some options. So if you feel great for the day and you want to build to a tough squat clean, which is what he's going to do, you can do that. For everyone else, we still want to get some exposure to lifting heavy under fatigue, and this is obviously a ton of fatigue from the deadlifts. But we want to make sure that we're still practicing. Just like, can you squat clean technically? Can you clean power clean technically under fatigue? And so we'll ask our athletes to start around 75%. Yeah, obviously can warm that up first. Like your first couple lifts can be below that. And then perform on the 90 seconds for three to four total lifts within that window, which is from eight minutes where he started this to the 16 minute mark. So basically you're doing like maybe four total lifts in that window, just getting practice. It's really good in case that comes out because this is another option. We've talked about this in Compete already and for our individual athletes. There are a couple ways that they could program for that range of athletes from basically 18 all the way up to 54. You can't just start with a heavy load, but you could do a ladder event where the load goes, gets heavier each round. You could do a complexity event that's basically a ladder, so the, the movement gets more complex. Maybe it's regular pull-ups to chest-to-bar pull-ups to bar muscle-ups. That's another variation. Or you can do just lifts because everyone can lift, and it just may range from one guy does a squat clean at 400 pounds and one guy does a squat clean at 150 pounds. You still can get a number on the board. So this is another way that CrossFit could test everyone where there's no set weight. It's however much you can do. All right, he smokes that one. Let's see. Where are we going here? 255. That's what it looks like. I think it's 15. Oh, and he put something else on. Two and a half maybe? Wish we, you know, we need those colored plates that you can, yeah. you can see. That's okay. In this situation, too, Look at I that towel flip. He's like, it's just, he's just good at everything. Um, in a situation where you are, you have a longer period of time. You know, in this case, we're we're giving everyone eight minutes, and that was so that practice could be had. In the open, they'll probably only give you like four or five, like what we've seen in the past with shuttle run burpee into the thruster. There's only like a couple of minutes to do the thruster. In this situation, it's practice. But if you have this much time, then you want to take your time on your first couple of lifts. The first one's always going to feel kind of trashy, as everyone knows it's on the sport. Maybe take an extra 30 seconds longer than you think because you still have so much time to do some heavier lifts. Oh, he gets it. That still looked pretty good. A little sloppy in the catch position. It kind of bobbled. Um, that's going to happen, though, if after pulling heavy off the ground with the deadlift. It's going to feel a little heavier, and then you pull harder than you think. All right, looks like 275 is on the bar. And it looks like Brooks is sitting down on the bar. I want to say he rests a little bit longer on this one. I believe at the beginning of this, he said he wanted like 290 to 300. That was kind of like a target range. So now we're getting pretty close to that. Can you tell what we just loaded? I think it's this is 275. 270. All right, so does anyone know that math, ladies and gentlemen? Take out your calculator. 275 of 300 is 92%. So 92% of where he wants to be, thats I mean, you're getting up there. Once you get above 90%, these are like basically max lifts after a workout. Taking a little extra time, smart. Having good practice, like good drills for your, it, 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 basically within a workout to ramp yourself up to that max lift. So you need to internally ramp yourself up to get your nervous system ready before you pull. Don't. Don't just kind of go up there and do a half pull. It's always going to feel heavier than it should. Are you dying to know what he's listening to? I, I Take a guess. Was, what do you think it is? Like Metallica or something like that, right? Isn't, he, isn't that what he likes? We'll have to see. Taylor Swift. <laughs> <T's crazy. laughs> do you know she's a billionaire now? Oh, is that true? Good for her, man. She's just... You want to talk about Taylor Swift while we wait a minute? Sure, why not? I, mean, she's just I don't a, know much about it. I don't either, but she's just a business mogul now. Really made a... And made that's all the time up. we have. <laughs> 275 pounds for Brooks. Awesome. Another good lift. Man, his, his lifts really have improved a lot. He's done a great job. His coaches have helped him a ton get stronger. The sport has just... I mean, it's such a bias of strength over the last three or four years. And, and I think I talked about this in one of the other demo videos we did. But, like, you can see. Oh, there's Jackie. Hey, what Jackie. Have to say? I don't know. I just I haven't seen shit. But. You going to watch this next one? He's probably going to crush it. You can give me a one out of ten. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll rate him. 
Always some great insight there from Jackie. I feel like you just always want to cut me off with people talking, huh? Should I say Pretty anything much. Else? Oh, look at Pippa over there. Oh. I won't say anything again. Looking like a Pippa. Pip. Pip has the best workout of all of these. Just wait till you guys see. It's the final week, right? Final week, baby. Um, I was talking about something, and now I don't remember. It's okay. No one cared. Yep, that's true. You think the, the breakup song with Travis Kelsey is going to be sweet? Oh, man, that is going to be fantastic. I feel bad for him, man. I really do have to thank her poor decision to men for all of her hits, right? Is that 295? Yeah, 295. Oh, yep. They gave us their rating there out of 10. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well done. That, that looked awesome. Oh, I, I actually remember what I'm going to say. I'm going to go ahead and say it. The nature of the sport has created so many strong athletes because it's been so biased. And you see this especially on the female side. The different body shapes have kind of continued to change. It's going to be a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger of an athlete because there have been so many high power, really heavy events. And that comes at a detriment to someone like Brooks, who's just like, he is so good on the erg, so good at the body weight movement, so good at the basic cross set stuff, but the heavy lifts hurt. This is an encouragement to people like that because that may change this year in the opening quarterfinals. Again, with that range from 18 to 54, likelihood of there being like a ton of heavy barbells is pretty low. But the one place it could hurt you is if there are multiple heavy lifts. So still driving your one RMs up and keeping that as a priority, that's a priority for Brooks, is going to matter. So make sure you're working on that this cycle and next cycle in Compete, which obviously we have full strength programs plus strength skill programs for those athletes that need it. Maybe we should get him to do a high rocks or something. Oh, man, he would crush a high rocks. Has he done one? I doubt it, but he would, like, yeah, he, he, would, he would do great. He probably wouldn't want to, but All right, here we go. Nice. Oh, oh I, he had I it. thought he had it. That he did. Uh, does he talk about that at the end? We'll have to remember? see. <laughs> Jackie with the good insight there. Yeah, yeah that was great. Let's see. He definitely had it. That was, that was a good pull. We need Mike McGoldrick in here to give some feedback on the Olympic lifting. Uh-oh. He said a curse word under his breath. I saw it. Oh, no. All right. Towel flip. Woo! Oh, <laughs> that was on it. fire. It. And if you need to buy a home in the uh, Atlanta area. The greater Atlanta area. Yeah. Hit up, uh, hit up Brooks. Preferably an expensive one. Okay. Uh, you see that cameo I just had there? Adding load uh, because he felt good about the last one. This is a thing that CrossFitters like to do for some reason. So, What are your thoughts it. on that? For him specifically, yeah, you I, saw the last lift. Was that a good call? Um, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Jiggle the arms. Turn up whatever was in the headphones. Oh. Man, his pool has definitely gotten a lot better. He's, he's elevating the bar much more than Max El Haj would as he walks into the room and right now. And they get a score of zero. <laughs> All right, let's see what he had to say. Not my best work. I think the thing that people want to know, though. My arms are heavy as lead. What's in the headphones? <laughs> I have a good mix of stuff going. I had, I had some EDM. I had some metal. I had Skrillex playing, and I have a Talca playing. Got to keep some variety in there, you know? Right. Anything you do different? Uh, I think for most people, break the bar muscle-ups. Um, your arms are just going to get really heavy, and the bar is going to feel extremely heavy when you get there. Like the, the turnover on every clean, the first couple ones, your arms are going to feel so slow. So you got to be really aggressive pulling under the bar. That was my main problem the whole time. But I think just break the deadlifts and the bar muscle-ups off the start, and that's going to be a lot better for most people. Cool. Appreciate it, bro. Gotcha. 